Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good day, everybody, and uh, welcome to Intro to Digital Evidence Investigator. Uh, we'll spend the next uh, 45 minutes or so uh, getting you into uh, ADF Solutions and Digital Evidence Investigator. I'm Richard T. Frawley. I am the Digital Forensic Specialist with ADF Solutions. I've uh, been here for a little over two years, uh, came on for this specific version of our tool. This is, uh, we're up to version four. Uh, prior to coming to ADF, I was an uh, investigator and examiner with the Milford Police Department in Connecticut. 17, 17 of the 22 years there uh, as an examiner investigator doing the uh, ICAC cases and any other type of case that came came along. Uh, so for those of you in law enforcement, I feel your pain. I know what you're going through and hopefully it would help you out. Those that are not, we're going to show you the tool, where it can fit into your workflow, give you a good idea of what the tool is, what it can do for you, uh, and get you uh, rolling on your way today. Um, along with the webinar today, uh, this is our introduction to DEI. We also uh, have some other ones specific to child exploitation cases, specific to fraud cases. Uh, we are going to be at the Dallas Crimes Against Children Conference, where we'll be holding um, three different hands-on labs and one lecture, and also at the uh, HTCIA conference in Washington, where we'll be doing some pre-conference training on digital events investigator. So if you're at any of those shows, feel free to sign up, stop by, come in and see me, have a conversation, and we'll go over the tool. So ADF Solutions, just to give you a um, lead in as to what we are and where we are, um, I'm not gonna kill you with death by PowerPoint. I am going to uh, go over a few slides and then get right into our tool. But as you can see here, ADF has been around for a long time. Uh, 2006, uh, we were in the uh, triage space, um, image identification, uh, very strong in that aspect, still very strong. We are one of the best out there. We are the best out there um, as far as that goes, but we've added quite a bit over the years, um, more towards the analysis and investigation portion of it. So you can also use this in the lab as opposed to where we started um, out in the field with the triage. A little brag slide, a um, few of the uh, places that our, our tool is currently being used. Okay, let, let me tell you, getting right into this, how Digital Evidence Investigator works. So you have your drive images, your external drives, SD cards, USB, just whatever you have as part of your case that you want to look through, that you want to uh, examine that you want to pull information from. So you'll be able to take these devices, connect them through your write blocker if it's a, one of those devices, or um, point it towards your, towards your drive image. And then you'd be able to hook up Digital Evidence Investigator on your forensic machine and uh, do a scan of that device. So what are we looking for when we're doing a scan? Well, let me explain a scan a little bit. Think about 90% of your cases being solved with 10% of your data. Think about not every case is a deep dive investigation where I need to be looking for that uh, single keyword in the unallocated space that's gonna put the case together. There are those cases, we're not denying that, uh, but there are also those cases where you can go in and get the information that you want. So. That's what we're doing. We're setting up scans. We're going in, pulling all the artifacts that you want in every case, all the files that you're looking for, hash values, keywords, and such, and scanning it that way. So in the lab, with your devices, doing your scans. The next way to do this, you have your forensic machine, and you're going to set up a USB device or collection key to go out into the field or in the lab on another machine to run a scan. So what we could do is set up that collection key or that USB device. We're gonna make it bootable so you can boot into a Windows, Mac, or Linux machine and do a scan. But we're also gonna prepare it so you can run it live. So if you have a uh, Windows machine that's up and running, you're on scene, you're in investigation, 
and you want to run a scan against that computer, you're going to be able to plug this USB device in, start your scan, gather all that information, and move along your way. So two different ways to use it, um, at the lab or out in the field, and in the field, you can do a boot or a live scan. So we're looking at, from triage through comprehensive investigations, this tool can be customized in all these different ways. So low hanging fruit, a couple of minutes on a scan, you're looking for your keywords, uh, let's say your child exploitation cases or your unique keywords in a fraud or, or intellectual property case. You're gonna set those up, you're gonna do a quick scan and in minutes you're gonna have a general profile of that computer and see if it's something that you wanna move forward to. Or you're going to look you know, somewhere in between or all the way up to a comprehensive everything from everywhere. So in doing that, we took a, take a typical two terabyte drive in a computer that's used by a normal user, processing pictures, videos, documents, the recent, uh, recent activity, linking those, um, going through all the web browsing history, videos, documents, recovering all those artifacts that you want in every case. In a couple of minutes, that can be done in a fast triage type setting. A little more than your low hanging fruit, um, but still triage. Up until doing a thorough, that same drive with carving in about six hours. Without carving, you can cut that in half, you know, anywhere to two to three hours, you can have a comprehensive scan done where you can go through just about everything from everywhere, uh, mismatches, file header analysis, the whole bit um, done like that. And you can, you can also customize this for anywhere in between that you may be looking for. Uh, just specifically, you're pulling out, you want specific files from a computer, you know where they are, you can also set it to do that. Also flexible in licensing with this tool. So you're going out on scene, you are law enforcement, you're going out to do uh, a search warrant. You know there's more than the bad guy's computer in the house. You know the kids have computers, you know have mom has, uh, you know, mom and dad have computers, maybe dad's the bad guy. So you got mom and the kids. You know those computers are gonna have to be scanned or seized one way or the other if you're at that house. So with our license, you can go in, you can prepare, let's say, eight different keys to go to the house, the collection keys. You can plug them into all the computers you need to scan, start the scan on the first computer, authenticate it with your license, and move on to the next one. So you could be scanning all these computers simultaneously at the same time um, and getting the job done. So one, you're cutting your backload, your backlog, you're getting through and seeing which computers need to be looked at. And not only that, at the end of the day, pat yourself on the back. Law enforcement was really nice to the family and left computers behind um, that didn't need to be seized and caught up in the red tape. All right, so let me now move on. Let me start here with a poll question. I'm gonna throw out a couple of poll questions today for you to answer. Um, just so I can get an idea who's out there. So let me launch this first one. All right. And while you're answering that question, I'm gonna move on my screen here. All right. So it looks like we are, oh, half of us are examiners, uh, another 25% investigators, and we have another 25% of other. So we have a good mix of uh, people in the audience here today. I think you can all get something out of the tool. I will try to uh, not focus in on one group or another, but like I said, I think we'll all get something out of this today. So let me close that poll. And now what you're looking at here is Digital Evidence Investigator, right into the tool. Very simple to use, ease of use, easy to navigate, uh, easy to set up, 
uh, straightforward, clean looking, uh, not hard to use. You can hand this off to somebody, uh, they'll be able to run it for you. As an examiner who is usually, and I had this role too, is usually in charge of setting things up for when you're going out and doing your search warrant, collecting, making sure everything's done right, everything's done by policy procedure, nothing's being stepped on, nothing's being ruined. So you'll be able to keep charge with this tool, customize the scans that are gonna be run out in the field against the computers, put them on the collection device, and have an investigator be able to go in and run it, and you have no worries that they're doing the right one or the wrong one, and we'll get into that a little bit. But it gives you control. So along with all the, the ease of use and the navigation here, you'll also have peace of mind in, in um, being able to have these scans run by somebody else. So you could scan the devices and images, like I'm saying, uh, I was saying before, in your lab. Uh, it's as simple as going in. It will show you the devices that are attached. We have a little lag time here. There you go. Um, so this is all the devices attached to my, my computer here. These are the profiles that I'm going to run. As I explained quickly before, it's a... Uh, combination of artifact captures and file captures. So you're going and getting all those artifacts that you want in every case, plus pulling out the files um, that you want. And then your scan information, date, time, things like that. Very simple, we'll get into that. Preparing the collection key, that's where you're gonna create that USB device to either go out into the field or to use it in your lab. Let's say you have a closed architecture computer such as a Surface Pro or, or some of the, the MacBooks or some of the HPs now very difficult to get in and get to that hard drive. You wanna be able to boot to it, image it, or scan it in your lab, you would do that there. Any imaging, you're attached, you've booted a, a computer, you wanna image that, you can do that here as well, or anything attached to your forensic machine. Here's where you review your scan results. Here's where you customize. This is your settings. This is where you're gonna set your data paths and your, your bookmark or tag names, um, everything will be done in here, your license maintenance, and then your user guide. You click on that, it opens up into a, into a PDF that you can follow through step-by-step, -step, comprehensive user guide, uh, get you through everything you need to do. Now that I gave you a quick tour, let me see here if I could launch another poll for you to take really quick. So what is your biggest challenge today? You know, what are you looking at? You have a problem with backlog, the number of devices that are coming in, they kind of go hand in hand sometimes. Workflow is not streamlined. Sometimes it's you come in and you're doing a preview, sometimes you're doing a deep dive, um, you're not really sure. Or is it your tools and your funding? I think um, I know when I was in there, I had a $5,000 budget a year, which was very difficult to work with. So tools and funding were always an issue for me. All right. Looks pretty good. Let me close that out. It looked like 15% backlog. Um, that's pretty good. Um, people's backlogs are getting lower. Uh, number of devices coming in. Yeah, that's an issue today. Uh, a lot of things coming in. Uh, workflow not streamlined, yeah, <laughs> you know, um, that that's uh, that's a tough one. But but streamlining it and getting the computer to where it needs to be in line, uh, we're, we're going to be able to help you with that. And uh, yeah, like I said, tools and funding, uh, we had uh, half of you with that, and about half with uh, the workflow. So getting into that, I gave you the overview, gave you the tour. I um, kind of went over a couple different times how we work. Uh, I want to make sure that that's uh, um, clear, that what we are doing is we are going in and getting what you are asking for and giving it to you. We're getting you to the information you want faster. We are letting you make decisions faster. Uh, a lot of investigations, you're looking for information that you know you're going to need to continue, where you're going to have to do preservation orders, or maybe you have to do some more search warrants to some of the social media giants. Um, you want that information so you can move forward with your, with your investigation while the computer sits 
or you can get this information and make your decisions and do your search warrants and move on with your investigations while the computer is being looked at because now you have this inf information as well. So let me show you some results, what you get out of this. So I have two scans here um, run against the same computer and um, so I have a custom one and uh, it's called K9 Intermediate. So this was an intermediate scan customized towards what we would consider a child exploitation or, or a cyber tip type of case. So any pictures in this, in this case of, of canines or, or dogs would be contraband. And I also did a scan against the same data um, as a quick general profiling to um, pull out just that low hanging fruit that you may be looking at investigation. So in this first one, as you can see, I ran it across this data and um, this is our summary page. This is everything I asked it to get and everything that it pulled out. Up on top, it has our scan information, the search profile, the statistics, how long it took to run, and how much what it collected. So in two and a half minutes, I collected 2,200 files plus artifacts, and I had a status of finished. This is all the artifact. Anything with an icon is our artifacts. So that's everything that's going in and automatically parsing out these things for you to see. So your, your application usage, your device information, your web browsing history. You can see all this was pulled in two and a half minutes as long as, as well as data. And then what I ran it against. So this was a 50 gig uh, part. It was a 250 gig drive. I ran it against a 50 gig partition. On this partition is the typical users profiles on a Windows machine because that's what I targeted. I didn't target anything out of um, those areas. I didn't target uh, Windows. I didn't target the program uh, folders, um, but I did target the user profiles and all the app data and everything that was in there. That's where you're going to get most of your information and when you want it fast, this is where we're going to get it. So I ran it against there, two and a half minutes. You can see all the results I got. Um, here, these are indecent pictures of children, keywords in file names. And you can see here, I have 24 hits in there. So along with that, if you're looking for low hanging fruit in two minutes, I can say, hey, I've got these unique keywords. And think about this along your fraud lines too. Any investigation you have, a homicide, a threatening, you usually have unique information that's gonna let you know, one, this is the computer, and two, they're up to no good or they're doing something that I expected, expected them to do. Um, so with that, you can see these popping up in two and a half minutes and know I've got the computer that I need to do a little bit more work on. Now with this computer, like I said, I ran a second scan against it. So let's say I am on scene. I ran that scan in two and a half minutes and I decide, hey, I want to up the game. I want to put in my unique keywords now. I want to grab those files that I didn't look at in that quick inter, uh, quick profile. So I'm still going to look at the user profiles, but now what I'm going to do is put in my unique keywords, my unique hash sets, and pull out exactly what I want, exactly what I'm looking for. And you can see here, now, in eight minutes, against the same data set, I've bookmarked up here, we have tag statistics, and that's, that's synonymous with bookmarking. And I have a level one, which would have been my contraband in this case. So I know when it's scanning and it's automatically bookmarking these in level one, I have 73 files that are contraband at this point. And then I have my level five, and in this case, I can tell you right away, that was the IP address that led me to this computer. And I, I can, uh, I'll show you that in the results. But you can see in two and a half minutes, I did a quick triage, low hanging fruit. And in eight minutes, I have this case that I could basically make a decision and go forward with the case. So I've collected some artifacts. I've collected some files. 
I know for a fact that some of them are contraband at this point within those eight minutes. Here's my unique keywords that I ran. Okay. I can go into my unique keywords. So I had, um, and you can see here, I, my keywords are listed up here. I had 174 hits for the word Komoko. And if you look down at my comments, anytime I caught that keyword, it made a comment saying that was the suspect username. I had the name Shard Lake in here. He was somebody that was trading. I have Bulldog. Again, this is a canine case, so this would have been unique, specific. Um, I put it down as the victim. Uh, would have been something specific to your case. Again, I had Dalmatian. Remembering this is a canine case. Um, again, that was another victim. And then I have my IP address, right? This is the reason, this is what I usually sent in my ex parte orders or my subpoenas and they came back and said here's the, the here's the account that was doing this so this is what led me here so now i have some hits and you can see i automatically bookmark these as a number five as i went through and my comments down here say it's the ip address of the suspect and it gives me all the properties of that file that it was caught in so I follow the IP address, I'm at the right location. I have some unique keywords that were hit on. I have some low-hanging fruit that was hit on. I have my indecent pictures of children, the hash sets. So we give you about 400,000 by default in here. Um, those are actual child exploitation cases, so I expect that to be a zero. Um, keywords in the file names. So those unique keywords that I ran, um, that would only hit on these type of files. Um, so they're named that. They're named uh, in this specific case like PTHC and, and Lolita and Hussy Fan and all those search terms that are used. Their files are called. I had 24 hits. So this is my low-hanging fruit. Keywords in the user profile. There were two more. Here's my uniqueness. Here's my hash sets. So I ran a custom hash set that we all keep hash sets that we like to run. Um, you can import those here. I'm going to show you how. If you get a cyber tip or you have a case where there are specific files that you want to hash, some PDF files that may have been compromised or, or, or uh, taken, you have some images from some kind of IP theft, you have images from a cyber tip, um, you can point this tool at those images, import them, and they will. Uh, you can run them. So here I had 32 hits against some specific files that I wanted to find on this computer. And then we also deal with Project Vic. So those, when they're imported, they automatically categorize um, by our level number. So if we have a tag level one, that would be your contraband, child abuse material. Tag level two would be child exploitation, child you know, three, anime and cartoon and so on and so forth. Um, and you can see web browsing history, download history, search terms. So with this, okay, just excuse me for one second here. All right. So with this, Again, let me just go back. I, I did a little explaining on here. I don't want to lose anybody. I did a scan in eight minutes. I added some unique information. I've got some contraband. My level one bookmarks already done 73. I have my level five, my IP, my IP address, so I know I'm in the right place. I can stop here, low hanging fruit, make my decision and move on. A lot, a lot do that, okay? What I'm telling you is right here is Let's go a little farther. I have the information here in order to make my case solid. So I have an up to the minute report now within 30 minutes instead of days and weeks. So I can go down to my picture view and you can see here uh, in the upper right hand corner, there's a number one, those are my tags. Those are my, um, I'm sorry here, I'm just trying to minimize. There we go. Um, so those are my tagged uh, uh, contraband images. I can go into my filter. I don't need to look at those. I can filter those out and say, just show me pictures that don't have a value. So now I have pictures. You can see I have a lot of stuff to go through here. All right, but I have in the lower right-hand corner, a little red magnifying glass with a warning sign on it. 
I know it's hard to see, but that's what it is. And what that does is it tells you that this picture was a hit on either a hash value or a keyword. So I know these are the pictures that I want to look at first. So I can take my filter, I can go to my matches and say, just show me the matches at this point, and I can apply that. So now you'll see that when I apply this filter, that I'm only looking at images now that have those matches. And as you can see, just about every one of them, or every one of them, is child exploitation or canine here in this case. Um, and I can select those all. And I can go over to my tag level or my bookmarks. And if they're child all, all contraband, I can select them as a number one. And now those are all bookmarked. I could turn off my matches filter. You can see that those pictures have now gone into the tagged filter. And now these are the pictures that I'm left with to go through. Okay. You can see up here that I'm looking at 6,100 of my 63 images and I have uh, one selected. I go back to my summary page and I can show you here that I've now selected 200 or I've tagged 220 of those images. Let me take that one step further. You're on scene, you have these images. Let me go back to those pictures here. Let me take those off. So I have this picture of the bulldog there, all right? He was one of my cyber tip images. You can see by my comment, he's already tagged. But what we have here, down here is linked artifacts. So what is that? So what that's doing is we automatically take this image that you've asked for, that you've looked for, and we link it to the artifacts that are gonna put it to the user. So you have recent files, you have most recently used, you have link files, you have auto destination or jump lists, right? You have all these recent files. So you can see here that this picture has been recently opened. So we link to those. You can actually link it and go see that evidence that, that you've collected. So there's the picture name and all the information from the link file. Navigate back. Here's the important part. This picture was downloaded. It shows me the download history. I can go and look and say, hey, here's the date and time. Here's the download entry from my browser where he got the picture. Okay, so I can take that back. I have my dates and times here. I can take this link to my timeline. So we keep a timeline of everything on, on the, every file and folder. It's default um, sorted by the timestamp. So it's taking me right to this image and I can see what was going on around that time. I can see the URL that was visited. I can see where he went to look at this picture. I can see that it was downloaded and the, the link was created. Um, so it, it puts you into that area and what was going on around that time. And I can see some other pictures up above too that were um, as part of the cache. Now, while you're in the timeline, looking at all that, there are a lot of things that you can do to create your own timelines. And again, this is the files and folders that are on the computer, um, all put together. It's your artifact records and your files. So it's not just that the, the web browsing history was hit, it is the actual URL, all those individual records, uh, when USB devices were inserted and such. So you could really put a lot together in here. And you can create your timelines uh, through activity. So all these different activities that are showing in the timeline, I can take those and create a smaller timeline with just the specific information that I may have been looking for. If you're looking on harassment or threatening cases and email and messaging is an issue, you'd be able to do that by recipient and principal, by, by who's receiving, who's sending. Um, pictures if they were sent back and forth. A lot of different ways that you can take and customize that, that timeline. So let me go back here. I am back to that picture of the dog. 
All right, one more thing on this page, I can also take it to the path that it is in. So it's filtered this out, and this is the only picture that is in that specific path. You can see that it is in a specific folder called dogs and bulldogs. So if that was the victim, as it says, or if, uh, one of the keywords is part of the cyber tip, you can follow that. I also see that the dog is here. I can also follow that and take that into that path. Um, one of the things, and I'll go over this, but we do collect when we do a scan, the first thing we do is create a list of all the files and folders that are on the computer, regardless of whether we collect it or not, and that is kept for you here in the files view. So in some cases, and I know some departments or prosecutors will say, give me a listing of everything that's on that computer along with your, your report. You have that right here. You can save it off into CSV and do some further stuff with it if you wanted or um, print it out in one of the other reports um, that we offer. So let me just go back here. Videos, if we had some videos that were of interest, you can see here that these were, they have that little red magnifying glass, means they're um, either a hit on a hash word or keyword. I can go to my excerpts here and see that that is a hit on some of the keywords that we had. So that's why these are, are caught up here. So we have the properties of the file. We have the frames, we collect frames. So 50 of those, first frame, last frame, and 48 from in between. Great feature. How many times do you have a case where there's thousands of videos to go through and you gotta start and stop and scrub through them? Here you collect them. We can collect just frames so you're not actually moving these movies over from, from computer to key. You can say, just collect the frames for me and you would be able to go through, set it on your first line, then arrow down through, and you get a pretty good idea of what is in these um, videos. Now, if you saw something in here, maybe it's a compilation, maybe there's something in the middle that you thought was of interest to you, you can also take this and preview it on your computer. So you would be able to play this as well, here on the computer. All right. So let me just go back again. I, I'm, I'm talking a lot. I'm showing you uh, what you can get out of this eight minute scan. I've been talking, um, explaining it. Uh, we're 20 minutes into this. I've bookmarked 220 items. I have my three that led me here. I have a bunch more you saw that can that can also be done. I've linked the user to these files. We also have a referenced file. Um, anything that we've collected that has any of those recent hit or download history, we can go in and look at those as well. Again, there's the, there's the dog. Here's another collie one. So you can see, here's the images that came through peer to peer. I can link file to user very quick. So I take all this, I have this report, I'm either back at the lab or I could be doing this out on scene. Um, but as we're doing it, I just wanna show you this real quick before I get into how we can customize this. Um, in the reporting, it's building this in the background for you as we're, as we're doing this. So, we have another webinar coming, or if you sit in one of my classes, we do go over the reporting a little more. Very simple uh, to do. Um, across the top are all my bookmark levels. You can see they're already checked. So what's checked is what's going to go into the report. These are the images that I have bookmarked and where they came from. So that's how they're gonna show up in my report. I have the timeline, I have the files. Operating system information, something I want in every one of my reports. It's already collected because I asked it to do it. I just check mark it and now that's part of my report. Summary, that's that first page we were looking at. I want that in my report. Maybe I want all the web, web browsing search terms 
in my report. I've already collected them. They're already in a table. All I need to do is check this, and that's now part of my report. You can export it. It goes right to your, to your desktop. So with that, eight-minute scan, 220 items bookmarked as child exploitation, other items bookmarked showing that what led me to here is correct. Uh, emails, messages, images, um, all linked together showing file to user. I can make a decision and say, yes, this is my person. I can make an arrest or I can take this information, do preservation orders and do search warrants uh, based on the information and go from there. So instead of uh, beating the dead horse, um, I think I've went over that uh, pretty solid. Let me show you now how we can customize this. How do you get to that point where you can run a scan and make a decision that fast? So we go into setup scans. We have our profiles. Quick, quick profiles targeted at the user profiles, targeted on keywords and file names and folders. It's quick, it's low hanging fruit. It's a general profile of that computer and then looking for that, that uniqueness in, in what we're looking for. Is there stuff on here that needs me to go further? Done in minutes. Intermediate, same thing, it's, it's targeted at the user profiles. It's actually going out and collecting files based on hash values, keywords, unique keywords, and actually saying, I want to collect all the pictures or all the documents or all the PDFs or all the, the database files from the user profiles. And then we have our comprehensive, and that's everything from everywhere. Okay, that's looking uh, in every aspect of the, of the, the, the logical, if you will. Um, we do collect deleted, so anything that has an MFT entry, anything that's in the recycle bin, anything that's orphaned, we also can collect those and do those. So that was, those would be part of your comprehensive. Um, and we carve images from free, free space, from, from unallocated. Now we do not go into free space for anything else at this point, because again, our target is 90% of the data, 90% of your data down to 10%, or 10% of the cases save, uh, solved or 90% of your cases solved with 10% of your data. We want to get that data down through the funnel to you so you can make decisions. And then we have our customs. So these are default out of the box. You get those with them. If you like the intermediate and you want to base your profile on that, you want to add to it, you would you can copy it. Or you can go in and, and start a, a new profile with a blank slate and pick and choose uh, as you go along. But you can see here all the different choices we have under applications, underneath communications, underneath device data, um, different ways to collect documents. Okay, and that's where some of the referenced files comes uh, is listed. Keywords, this one is unique. You can see I put in here, these are my unique keywords. This is custom that I made. Our indecent pictures of children, Intel keywords, hash sets, those are a custom that I have added, multimedia, user data, web browsing. Fairly simple. I copied it, everything that I want in there is checked already. If I didn't want it in there, I can uncheck it. So if I didn't want to run the, the hash set in the user profile that we've given you, the 400,000, um, and you have custom ones or you're doing a specific case, you can turn that one off. And that's what we're gonna do here. So I have what I want in there. I wanna add some of my own uh, captures, my keywords, my hash sets. I would go up to new capture. Okay, our toolbar is on the right hand side. This would be my function toolbar. If you noticed before on the left hand side uh, were the pictures and that's all our navigation. So navigation would be left and function would be right. If you're ever looking to do something, uh, that's where you would look. So I'm going to create a new profile. I have options. I can go in and collect files. So what does this mean? I can target exactly what I'm looking for and where I'm looking for it. If I am just looking for audio files in a case, I can select audio files or any of the different ones that are in here. If I'm just looking for MPEGs, I would be able to do that. Um, we can get very granular in the way we search. So to make it quick, 
audio files. Um, I want a fast identification. That would be by, by file extension only. This next choice is by file extension first, and then if it doesn't have a file extension, it would um, it would identify it for you by file header analysis or thorough file identification. That is a thorough file signature analysis, file header analysis on every every file on the computer, and then we decide what it is and then go from there. So that's going to add time uh, to your searches, to your keyword searches, to your hash sets. Those are comprehensive. Your first two are for quick and intermediate, and their last one is your comprehensive. Do I want to look inside of archives? Do I want to see if they're embedded? And are they going to be in picture DB files? You would make the choice here. And then where you select on the computer. Do I want the entire file system? Do I want to target someplace such as the user folder? And I'll show you that in a second. Deleted files. And then do I want to carve? Um, the other way to also do this is to say, I want all files that are in a specific location. So if I was looking to collect, and I know I have it here, my mobile sync backup folder, so I knew that this person had iPads, iPhones, iWhatevers all in the backup folder, and he might have multiple ones in here, and I wanna go in and just collect all the information from there, that's how I would set it up. I would say collect all the files from that specific folder plug it in, run the scan, that's exactly what it's going to do. Find that folder, pull all the files off. If you were looking to just collect PDFs, documents from the entire file system, let's say you have a storage drive and uh, they have a whole bunch of different types of files on there, but you were just specifically looking for PDFs and, and docs, um, you would be able to do that as well. Set it to go in and just pull out those files for you. What we're going to custom, what we're going to go here is key, keywords. I like to show you this because this is what everybody, um, this is hash values. This is where you're going to get unique. You can add your own keyword um, list as you go along. Type it in. If you wanted to auto bookmark, as I explained earlier, you would do it here. If you wanted to comment, you type in your comment here. The other way for me to bring in is in the toolbar. I can import a CSV file. I can um, I'm sorry, hold on one second here. Yep, I can bring in my custom keywords. All right, and you can see I also had auto comment on that. Um, another way to search, I can also import uh, Project Vic, and I can also point it at a folder to uh, bring in. So uh, you have a cyber tip, or like I was saying before, you have um, uh, some images or some PDFs or something that you can you want to hash and look for on there. You'd be able to point it at that folder and bring them in as well. So what I'm going to do is run you through how to look for these keywords. Um, I'm sorry, the, not the hash, this is keywords. Um, how am I gonna look for those? So I have that information in here. Um, I could run it against file and folder names. So that's important for like victims and, and uh, uh, child exploitation case uh, keywords and stuff like that. Not so much for IP addresses, but it's seamless, it runs fast. When you start the scan, First thing we do is make a file and folder listing of everything on the computer, and these keywords will be run against that seamless fast. The next thing we do is artifacts uh, records. So as we're parsing out all those records, all your web browsing history, all your search terms, all your uh, USB data uh, application, we're running the keywords against that. Seamless doesn't add a lot of time. File content. And, and what do I want to run these keywords against? Let's say documents, internet files, and text files. I can pick and choose what I want to run it against. Again, how do I want to identify these files? Where do I want to look? And where on the system do I want to target? So if I wanted to target the user folders, I would go in here, pick users. If I knew it was a, um, 
the file, if I knew the, the operating system and it was in a user's type folder, I could just select that. If I was worried it might be something that still had documents and settings, I can check that as well. Covered all my bases. Now I'm looking for those keywords, these types of files. This is how I'm identifying those files. This is where I'm, lo I'm looking in archives and I've targeted the folders. I would hit OK. <coughs> Excuse me. I am looking for this as substring and I want to collect those files. You can also add regular expression. Um, let me go up here. I can clear my slate. Let me just go up here and show you really quick some fraud keywords. So you can see there, there's my regular expression. Looking for Visa, MasterCard, uh, Social Security numbers. I would make sure if it's uh, in this format, I check regular expression, and then I want to collect those files. If you're running these keywords and you are getting zero hits, here's your tip of the day. Check here. Okay, it's usually because you're searching regular expression and it's substring, or you have it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yeah, it's usually the, the check marks here that you're going to end up with zero results because none of your folder file names are going to have that format if you're running it as substring. Uh, hash values. Um, so if I wanted to bring in hash values, same thing. I could point it at that folder. I could select the folder. It would hash everything that's in there. As it's hashing them, <coughs> it says, hey, if you find these, you want us to automatically bookmark them for you. So this is where you could set that auto tagging here. So I can say, yeah, these were all child or these were all contraband. I know I'm going to make an arrest if I find them. Please, you know, do that as a level one, import it. I could import um, a CSV file. As I said before, there's my hashes. I open it. I've brought in 168. Now it gives me an error here. It says three of those were already present, so they weren't added again. So what are we doing? We're not wasting time uh, searching for duplicates. So if you have duplicates in, in something that's already in there, it will not add those again. And then Project Vic. If you have a JSON file um, that's Project Vic or Cade, you would be able to also bring those in. And it automatically turns on the auto tagging for you, uh, categorizes um, as you will. So once that is done, you would put it in a category. Uh, you would give it the unique um, unique name of why you're searching this. Maybe it's a case number. And then next, and you notice the screen. This is where DEI is very easy to use. These screens are very similar, uh, put together very well. So what am I looking for with these? Well, they were all pictures or videos. So I would select those. I'm going to select the thorough identification. Um, why am I doing this? So it's going to do a fast identification of the of the pictures and the videos. So it's going to look for all the JPEGs, MPEGs, uh, everything that we have listed in here. It's going to look for by file extension. Let me just give you a quick look. There you go. And then if it comes across a file that does not have a file extension, it will identify it. And, and if it's a picture or video, it will include it. Okay, very fast, doesn't add a lot of time. It's better than doing a, th a, a thorough file identification for all files if you're doing an intermediate or a quick scan. Um, but that's going to allow you to catch all those cache files and stuff that may be missed if you just did a fast identification. Um, so we want to collect them. Again, pictures, videos, doing that thorough identification for files that don't have a file extension. They're pictures and videos. I want to look in archives. I want to look in documents. I want to look in picture database files. And again, uh, if I'm doing quicker and immediate, maybe I want to target just the user folders. I can do that. You would save it, and it automatically adds it to your profile. Okay. So I've gone through an overview of the tool. Um, I've, I've gone through the results you can get. I've gone through a quick setup. Um, let me show you preparing a collection key to go out in the field to use. So I've created a custom profile. I want to go out on scene. What I would do is put in my USB device that I want to that I want to uh, prepare, and I would go to prepare collection device. 
let me just, there we go. So I have all my search profiles that I made. You can see here's a custom one that I made um, that I want to use on scene. So I'm going to add that to, to the key that I want to um, take out in the field. I also want to bring out a quick, maybe general profile, maybe chick, quick child exploitation, depending on what I'm doing, or maybe an intermediate. If I have family computers that I want to make sure there's nothing on there and leave those behind, I could bring that out as well. Here's where you have the control over what goes out into the field. I would take that, I would select that, I would select the USB device that I wanted to prepare, and I would hit prepare. It's that simple. It's going to make that USB device bootable. It's going to make it uh, be able to run live, and um, it's going to allow you to go out and do those scans. When you go out to the field, you would plug in that USB device. It would come up. There is a, a uh, icon on there that says start.bat. It's a batch file. It would start the live scan for you um, and start running automatically. You can collect RAM out in the field uh, if you're out there when you're running one of those. Uh, very simple um, analysis out in the field, uh, same way. Um, so I've gone over that. I've gone over the setup. I've gone over uh, USB booting. Uh, a couple of things I want to get to um, before I open it up for questions. Now, I know this was quick. It was an introduction, what we can do, how we can do it. I've kind of uh, uh, gone over things quick. If you get a trial or if you decide you are going to use um, hold on a second. Okay, so if you decide you're going to try out this tool, if you want to use it, you get 100% support during that time. With that, one of the things is another web demo, one-on-one -on -one with you, to walk you through this so you have comfort in using the tool when you're trying it out. Along with that evaluation and along with that 30 minutes or so of walking you through the tool, what I request out of you is honest feedback. What'd you like? What didn't you like? Good, bad, or, or indifferent? I'm your liaison to our great development team and uh, the rest of the forensics team on what users want, uh, what they're looking for, what they like, what they don't like. Um, so I ask for that out of out of you. But it's it's a hundred percent support. Anything that you have, any questions you need, you need us to walk through a specific um, profile. You want to know where to check this button to do that. If if you forgot, if we walked you through it and you don't remember, you give me a call, you give me an email, and we go through it. If you're in Dallas, if you're at HTCIA, stop by the booth, stop by our classes, stop by one of our lectures, say hello, introduce yourself, and we can go over the tool as well. Um, with that, um, Brett, are you with me? I am with you, Rich. Uh, we don't have any questions in the question pod, but uh, we'll open it up. If anybody has questions, please feel free to, uh, to share those, and uh, we'll, we'll answer them now. And if you're planning on being at the Crimes Against Children Conference or the HTCIA event, please send us a message on that as well. We'll be happy to uh, set up time to meet with you face to face. All right. So, again, um, thank you. I uh, appreciate all your time. I know it's time out of busy schedules, time out of your day. I thank you for listening. Um, like I said, tryadf.com, 100% uh, support. Uh, we're here for you. And um, thank you. Thank you, Rich. Great job. Thanks.